Welcome back to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and I've got a question for you. It is the holiday season, and you might be looking for a great Christmas gift for the hunter in your life. Well, guess what? I've got a great idea for you. It's a book. It's called How to Hunt Everything. The author is Andrew McKean, the editor-at-large for Outdoor Life magazine, and it is a beautiful hardcover coffee table book meant for enjoying in front of the fire on a snowy evening at home when you're dreaming about your next big adventure. If you are looking for a great Christmas gift for a very affordable price, this is going to be hard to beat. And with us here to tell you more about this book is the author, Andrew McKean. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. It's nice to be back. Well, it's nice to chat with you again. And I'll tell you what, I really enjoyed the pheasant hunt that you and I went on in South Dakota. Can't wait to share that with our listeners on our sister show, America Outdoors Radio, this weekend. It was a great time. In fact, uh, before the show, you and I were just talking about our trip back. I actually scratched out another limit with my my dog, Nellie. She just wasn't done uh, hunting with you. She just needed a little bit more. So I gave her a little bit more, but it's nice to be back. But what a great hunt that was. That was. And I know that Miss Nellie is a pup, but I think she is doing great. So good for her. Let's get back to the topic at hand, though, because again, it is Christmas time. A lot of people are scrambling, trying to find that perfect gift. Why don't you tell our listeners about this book, How to Hunt Everything, and what they're going to find inside the pages? Sure. Well, it's, uh, you know, the title is very modest. Um, <laughs> How to Hunt Everything, is, it's, it lives up to that promise on the cover. It is a round-the-world journey through a hunter's lens of pretty much everything, every species, every place to hunt in the world. The only criticism I got after it came out was that I hadn't included a couple of uber-obscure species or feral cats. And so, you know, you can always wait for volume number two. But no, it is a collection of really how-to and where-to advice on how to hunt literally every winged, furred, and sometimes uh, finned critter in the world that's open to, to legal hunting. Now, you've got, what, like 200 different types of animals to hunt within the, the pages of this book. And, and you wrote most of it, and you've hunted most of them, but you did have a little help with some of the species that you didn't have experience with. Yeah, I have been fortunate enough to hunt you know, pretty much around the world, but there are a few blind spots in my experiences. And so I, I asked a couple of my fellow outdoor writers to contribute their perspectives on, you know, for instance, rhino hunting. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners will have a chance to hunt rhinos into the future, but I know it's, uh, the sun is kind of setting on that. So, you know, the African big five, uh, I, I needed a little help with that, as well as crocodiles in, uh, in Africa. That's, that's another one that's eluded me. So uh, Bryce Towsley, outdoor writer, David Draper, another outdoor writer, Kyle Winterstein all helped. They contributed bits and pieces to the book. So it is a platoon approach. Well, I am really interested in a couple of the species here, and, and they're not ones that are really exotic, but they're ones I don't have any experience with. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to ask you about them. And, and let's start off with moose, because uh, where I live in Washington State, and actually in a lot of states, it's a once-in-a-lifetime license draw. So it's not like too many of us in these states where it is that opportunity have a whole lot of experience about how to go about doing it. So if we're lucky enough to draw that license or tag, or maybe we just want to go to Canada and hunt moose up there or over to Maine, how do you go about it? Wow, that's a great question. Um, and it, it is probably my most endearing and my favorite uh, animal in many cases, because moose moose live in difficult places, but they live in lots and lots of places. And in fact, um, I live here in eastern Montana, where we've got a burgeoning moose population. You don't think of moose on the eastern plains of Montana, but we've got a population moving in from the grain belt in Canada, um, and there are more and more hunting opportunities all the time, which almost makes up for the loss of some hunting opportunities with the Shiras moose in a lot of the Rocky Mountains. But the cool thing about our largest member of the deer species is its distribution is really circumglobal. It occupies, you know, kind of the northern latitudes from Alaska all the way, you know, across Canada through Newfoundland and then into Europe and Russia and then back around again. So it's truly a global species. Uh, but in order to hunt them, you either have to be wealthy, lucky, or a little bit of both. Because, you know, to draw a tag in most of the United States requires years of drawing and then spectacular luck to finally get that tag. Or you can um, hire an outfitter and go hunt them really across Canada or Alaska. You know, Alaska's got a DIY moose opportunity. It's one of the few big game species, grizzly bears and doll sheep are excluded from this, that 
you can hunt without a, a, a licensed guide or an outfitter. So it really is a, uh, a species that you could have your own adventure really pretty inexpensively once you get the logistics figured out. But I love everything about them from their, you know, the, the immensity of their antlers to the places they live and their behavior. You know, a lot of people look at their big bulbous nose and squinty eyes and they mistake them for being um, maybe intellectually challenged where they're anything but that. And once they know they're hunted, they're a really elusive animal. And one other way to hunt them uh, that I noticed in, in your book is boat hunting, kind of a Canadian thing. Uh, you're not exactly yeah. shooting from the boat, but that's how you're finding them, aren't you? You know, one of the interesting things about moose is they, they really love those boggy, low-slung areas, mucky, muddy, swampy, brushy, places that really uh, make hunting difficult. But one of the ways to get through is on flowages, and, and canoes are a great way to do it. I would say the Canadians and kind of the, the fur trappers, borrowing from the Indians, sort of invented that. But it's easy to do, actually, even in the States. Lake hunting um, is a really effective way to hunt moose in the Rocky Mountains, especially in the rut when they come down out of the high country and mingle with girls along lake shores. All right, let's change from the northern hemisphere to the southern climates. Talk about something completely different alligators and crocodiles. I mean, you can hunt them in the the southeastern United States. You can hunt them in South America. You can certainly hunt big crocs in Australia. What are the different ways that they're hunted in these areas? Again, this is really another real global species between alligators and crocodiles. They occupy that kind of um, the swelter zone, as I call it, around the world. And there are about as many ways to hunt them as there are uh, species and subspecies. You know, a real famous and effective way to do it in the American Southeast is with a baited, um, a big, basically grappling hook. You put a half a chicken carcass on it, and basically you just, you gig them. You know, another way, a lot of people will spotlight them, and they will either shoot them from afar or even get close to them and and spear them. Uh, Bow fishing is somewhat effective, although I've heard lots of horror stories about broadheads glancing off that really armored snout. Oh, yeah. And then in Africa, uh, a a way to do it is to stake out a bait on the shore uh, for crocodiles. And basically, you sit in a ground blind or some other kind of hide and ambush them when they come for it. Again, people mistake alligators and crocodiles both for being kind of slow and methodical, but they have amazing olfactory senses. So their sense of smell is immaculate. So you get the wind wrong, you're not going to ever even see one. Wow. Believe it or not, we are already out of time. So we oh, don't say that. I know. I know. So we've got to get back to this, how to hunt everything. How can people get a hold of this book so they can buy it for Christmas? The best way and uh, is to go to Amazon and just search for it. You'll find it. I think it's discounted right now. You can get a blazing bargain on it. If somebody wants an autographed copy, I'm sure they'll find a way to find me, and, and I'll, I'll work with them to get them an autographed copy. But it, it is. If you've got a hunter in your life, it's an essential book, either for the coffee table or the bookshelf, and, and it was just a lot of fun to put together. And, folks, this is a blazing bargain. I just checked this a couple of days ago. It was being offered at only $19, but there's limited quantities, like only a dozen left in stock. So you're going to want to hop on this right away. The book, again, How to Hunt Everything by Andrew McKean. Look for it at Amazon.com. Beautiful coffee table book. Great layout, just as you would expect from the folks who produce Outdoor Life. This is going to be a gift that somebody in your life is going to enjoy for many a winter night. Andrew, thanks for sharing this with us today on Northwestern Outdoor Radio. Thanks, John. 